Volodymyr Zelensky was at the opening of the World Economic Forum in Davos in Switzerland today with a strong warning for the world's political and business leaders. Almost two years since Russia launched its full-scale invasion of his country, uh, Zelensky, the Ukrainian uh, president, uh, told leaders that his country wasn't the only one in Russia's strides, uh, sights. If anyone thinks this is only about us, this is only about Ukraine, they are fundamentally mistaken. Possible directions and even timeline of a new Russian aggression beyond Ukraine become more and more obvious. Let me ask very honestly, which European nation today can provide a combat-ready army on par with ours, holding back Russia? And how many men and women are your nation ready to send to defend another state, another, another nation? And if one must fight against Putin together in the years ahead, isn't it better to put an end to him and his war strategy now, while our brave men and women are already doing it? They are the world's chance. They are. Yevhenia Kravchuk is a member of the Ukrainian parliament and speaks for Vladimir Zelensky's Servant of the People Party. Uh, welcome to DW. Uh, what does Ukraine want to see from uh, President you. Zelensky's visit to Davos? Um, as for from you know any other visits that President Zelensky uh, does abroad, he builds up um, you know, strengthen up the coalition of Western uh, countries that do value democracy and do not want to see the world um, based order, you know, that the based on uh, international law uh, falling apart. Um, so, um, as you probably heard uh, during his speech, uh, President Zelensky's speech um, in uh, Davos, he strengthened uh, that uh, Putin is not going to stop. He is uh, trying to find weakness among um, democracies, among Western countries. Uh, actually, missiles that uh, Russians had been sending in December and January that bombarded uh, Ukrainian cities were made uh, with uh, Western components. So we have to be tough on sanctions, finding these loopholes uh, that still exist. And of course, to, um, uh, you know, make sure that Ukraine gets the needed uh, military assistance. Right. And, and, and President Zelensky opened his speech with some difficult questions, including how long uh, the war would last and whether it is time to negotiate uh, with Vladimir Putin. Uh, is it time to talk to the Russian president? Uh, as might you, um, you know, saw uh, President, well, can't really uh, say he's president, but whatever, the uh, political leader of Russian Federation, uh, Vladimir Putin, he said that um, he's not uh, going to, um, you know, go away from the occupied territories. Uh, and actually, he mentioned um, uh, that they see, Russia sees um, some, um, you know, a danger for Russian-speaking citizens in Baltic states, in, you know, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia. Uh, and actually, when I speak my colleagues from these uh, Baltic states, uh, you know, members of parliament, they, uh, especially in, in private uh, talks, they clearly say we are next if Ukraine falls. So, um, you know, uh, if uh, it's, uh, uh, w w we see a negotiation just um, uh, giving up uh, Ukrainian territory and allowing a police in the aggressor so he can plan um, other steps, uh, then I, I don't really think we would like um, and we will like the world we will wake up in. Right. OK, so d no time. This, now is no time uh, to talk to Russia. So when would you talk to Russia? Under what circumstances? Uh, when when actually uh, uh, Putin understands that uh, the Western countries will not blink, uh, that the pressure of sanctions will be really a pressure of, of sanctions, that his economy is no longer running and he's out of money to pay pensions for, for his pensioners. Um, and of course, understanding that he 
has to obey the international rules and that the borders of the state is uh, something that has to be, uh, you know, valued. And you cannot just come and take chunk of other countries uh, part and, and together with people occupying them, putting them in prisons into basements, detaining them, stealing kids and everything. Until Understand the time this understanding is not there, then, you know, <laughs> it's difficult to talk. I, 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 and I appreciate you, you giving us your, your, your time, but you, you will appreciate that those conditions you laid out there, Western countries not blinking, uh, 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 Russia running out of, of money and uh, finally uh, obeying international uh, uh, law and order, you know that's a long, long time away. And Russia's pockets are deeper than Ukraine's at the moment. Uh, well, that's, let's find reasons why they are deeper why countries still buy their uh, oil and gas. I mean, Russian economy is uh, in the, um, you know, amount is the economy of state of Texas in the United States. So let's not uh, over uh, exaggerate. And about the, uh, you know, that the times are gloomy and, and it, you know, we don't like the situation. Uh, we just had the speech of uh, Prime Minister of Great Britain, Rishi Sunak. And uh, when I was uh, listening to it, it was, there, there was a very good detail. He said in 1942 in Great Britain, it also didn't look uh, too good. You know, Hitler was still strong. Uh, he was, um, you know, occupying uh, a big part of uh, Europe. But uh, Brits didn't give up and many brave people around the world didn't give up. And that's, you know, I, I see the, the way for us. We will not give up. OK. EU um, uh, polling shows continuing support for Ukraine here in Europe. I wonder, though, if you're concerned that the supply of US weapons could dry up as it goes into election mode, uh, especially with Republicans turning away from uh, support for Ukraine. Uh, well, for what I hear from my sources uh, in in American establishment, uh, it's not actually this negotiation process. It's not actually about not wanting to support Ukraine. It actually uh, is about the internal questions about the border, about the immigration policy, which is you know tough, of course, to to solve. That they have uh, a lot of discussions on that. Uh, but majority of um, both uh, Republicans and Democrats are standing uh, for Ukraine. And um, as we heard the uh, news that President Biden is waiting, the leaders, both from the Senate and the House of Reps, from both parties um, into the uh, negotiation and discussion, we hope that in uh, coming weeks uh, we'll see the results um, of this discussion. Good talk. Of Thank course, you, with the voting in, in the package. Understood. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, Evgenia Kravchuk, a Ukrainian lawmaker. Thank you. Bye-bye.